Hello and welcome to week two of our journey through the Greek of 1 John this summer. This week we should get through chapter one, uh, beginning today with verse six. So as our practice has been, uh, we begin by giving a chance for those of you who are a little bit more proficient in Greek to pause the recording and see if you can do the whole thing cold turkey. So now's the time and we're back. And so uh, now let me give you my quick translation for those of you who are a little bit more advanced and then you can go on your way. So if we say, or if we should say that fellowship we are having with him. So somebody says, I have fellowship with God. And yet in the darkness we are walking, we lie. We are not doing the truth. We are not practicing the truth. In other words, um, the previous verse has said God is light. There's no darkness in God at all. And so if you say, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm with God, yeah, me and God, we're best buds, yeah, everything's good, yeah. Um, but yet you are walking in darkness. And by the way, walking implies living. It's not some theoretical, well, I'm as sinful as ever, but God looks at Jesus instead of me. First John knows absolutely nothing about that kind of squishy theology. Walking is about living. If you are not living in the light, if you are not living a life that is pleasing to God, if you are walking in the darkness and you say, no, no, me and God, we're, we're doing fine. We're, we're walking together, you know, but you're not living in the light. Eh, survey says you lie. Uh, you know, you actually, a lot of people may think that's good theology, but first John is not. And I think it's important for us to get grounded in that point. Because in a couple days, we're going to come to a verse that everybody doo -doo 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 -doo, everybody focuses on it and said, yes, Christians can't help but sin in word, thought, and deed every day. First John knows nothing about that. And if you interpret 1-8 that way, eh, you've missed it. Um, the point is clear. God is light. There's no darkness in him at all. If you are living in the darkness, you're not having fellowship with him. Just, it's not possible. And so that's our little exegetical moment on this verse today. Okay, now for those of you who are proficient at Greek, you can go on and, uh, you know, cut a, some flowers. Okay, so, uh, whoa, I'm way on the wrong one here. So let's go ahead and, and break down the translation for those of you who are maybe a little bit more uh, on the path. So the first part, if we should say, uh, is the translation there. Uh, this is the word for if, on. There are two words for if, actually. Those of you who've had me in Greek at some point may know that I call this one the iffy if. Uh, he's not saying that anybody's saying this. He's saying if somebody should say that, if we should say that. And then here is we should say. I put the should in uh, because it's uh, what we call a subjunctive, but more on that in a moment. That we are having fellowship with him. This is a present tense, so we might emphasize the are having um, as a kind of ongoing state koinonia, fellowship. This is a, a that clause. I'll tell you what kind of a clause of that clause is on the next slide. Uh, but we're doing translation now, right? And yet in the darkness we are walking. These two go together. If we say, and at the same time we're walking in darkness, that's all the if part of this. And I'll tell you what the if part is called on the next slide. And in the darkness we are walking. This is not a subjunctive. Yes, this is a subjunctive. This is a subjunctive. Talk about that on the next slide. We are lying and we are not doing the truth. We're not practicing the truth. So there's the breakdown of our translation. So now let's look at the grammar. So, uh, on is the iffy if. And what, if you've had me for class, what kind of thing would I say now when I notice that this is a, a on about, about the verb? What would I say? I would say, subjunctive is coming, subjunctive is coming. On takes the subjunctive. It's the iffy if. It's got that on in it, a little bomb that blows everything up and makes everything contingent up in the air. So on is a if clause, which we call a conditional clause. So this is a conditional clause. The, the if part of a conditional clause we call the protasis, the iffy, the if part. Okay. So the on tells me it's conditional, and this is the protasis, the if part. Now, what about apomen? Let's go ahead. If you didn't see what I just put there, let's, let's start at the end and move backwards and see what we can come up with. So what does the men tell me here? 
This is a first person plural ending, a we ending, and it's active. Don't confuse it with the men are passive participles. The men are passive participles cliche uh, in, implies that there's letters after, after the men. Uh, it's in the, the men is in the middle, as it were. When men is at the end, it's a first person plural active ending. Don't forget the beginning stuff uh, because of the ending stuff. By the way, um, tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday, uh, May 6th, uh, I plan to start my uh, run through uh, the Greek alphabet and such. Um, it's possible, uh, I'll notify my patrons, this is for my patrons. Uh, so uh, if you're my patron, I will please keep in touch. I will uh, help you know what, what, where the state of that is. Okay, so uh, this is the first person plural active ending. The omega tells me it's subjunctive because the connecting vowel is fried. Normally before men, you would have an omicron, amen. Uh, but the omicron is fried and so it's subjunctive. And then I, I usually say it's aping an aorist. Uh, and so it's aorist and it's the irregular aorist, second aorist of Lego. Okay, now this is a, a that clause which is called a, a noun clause. Uh, so uh, whenever hoti is translated as that, it introduces a noun clause, which is a clause that collectively functions as a noun. Okay, so this is still part of the if, this is the second part of the if part. We've got two parts to the if part, if we say and yet if we walk. So it's the second part of the conditional clause. Peripatomen again is first person plural. Um, it's it's uh, active because the men. Now it's subjunctive, but it's from peripateto. This is a crash verb or a contract verb. The epsilon has crashed into an omega. I know it's subjunctive because it goes with the on. Um, interestingly enough, if the epsilon had crashed into an omicron, it would have been an oo. Um, and so this is definitely subjunctive. Uh, and it's the present tense because all the letters of the parapete are, are here. The epsilon's crashed, but it's there. It's just mangled. Um, so um, subjunctive, subjunctive, both because of the if part. So that's the protasis part. The second part of a if clause, if then clause, the then part is called the apotesis. And here we have, uh, if, if we say this, and yet we are walking in darkness, then uh, we are lying, we're not doing the truth. By the way, scote, I should probably mention, the article never lies. So scote, I know that it is a dative singular because uh, the omega with a subscript hanging on um, is the dative singular. Could be either neuter or um, uh, uh, masculine, but I'm pretty sure that this particular scotos is a uh, neuter, I believe. Um, this is an irregular, kind of a weird form. Uh, I, I thought, what is that, a verb, a third singular? What is that? The yoda here is the clue that it's dative, uh, but this is just a really irregular form. It's the ethnos ethnus type, the genos genus type, uh, scotos scotus type. Um, it's a really weird third declension neuter neuter form, but I could have I could have uh, cheated off of the article to know that it was accused uh, that it was dative singular and neuter. Okay, so we finally come to the end of this video, and this is the part where those of you who are absolute beginners in Greek, where we we look at the letters and we pronounce them um, as if we don't know anything else. Everything else I've been saying is just gibberish. I want to know about the letters. Okay, so let's go. Epsilon, alpha, nu, pronounced. On. Try it yourself before I say it. Epsilon, iota, p, omega, mem, uh, mu, mu, epsilon, nu. Ape, omen, ape, omen. Um, omicron with a rough breathing mark like the C. Tau, iota, ho, t. Kappa, omicron, iota, nu, omega, nu, iota, alpha, nu. Koinonion. It's neon. Epsilon with a smooth breathing mark, ki, omicron, mu, epsilon, nu. Echomen, um, mu, epsilon, tau, and the alpha's been chopped off so that metau two is just easier to say than metau two. Uh, and so the alpha on meta has been chopped off, met. Alpha, upsilon, smooth breathing mark. Tau, omicron, epsilon, au two. Uh, Chi, hopefully you know by now, kappa alpha yoda, epsilon nu, n, to, tau omega, with a scrub, uh, yoda subscript hanging on for dear life, a circumflex, n, to, 
Sigma, Kappa, Omicron, Tau, Epsilon, Iota, Scote, in darkness. P, Epsilon, Rho, Iota, P, Alpha, Tau, Omega, Mu, Epsilon, Nu, Parapetomen, Psi, Epsilon, Upsilon, Delta, Omicron, Mu, Epsilon, Theta, Alpha, Pseudometha, we are lying. By the way, this is a deponent. I didn't say that in the video uh, earlier. It's a, it's a pseudomai. Oh my, it's deponent. Deponent means it takes middle or passive endings, but it's actually translated actively. So we translate it, we lie, um, uh, even though this, this um, metha is a, normally a passive or middle or ending, we would have thought I am, I am being lied, which is kind of weird. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter, it's deponent. We translate it actively, we are lying. Chi, Omicron Upsilon, ooh, it's not. P, Omicron Iota, Omicron Upsilon Mu, Epsilon Nu. Poi, ooh, men, we are doing. Tau, Eta, Nu. Tain, another word for the. Uh, alpha, Lambda, Eta, Theta, Epsilon, Iota, Alpha, Nu. Ale, Theon. All right, and there you have it. We have uh, 1 John 1, 6 to kick off week number two of our journey through 1 John in Greek.